The conflict in Sudan has had a significant impact on neighboring countries, particularly Egypt, which has become a destination for a large and growing population of Sudanese refugees. This influx of refugees has presented both challenges and opportunities for Egypt as the newcomers influence Egypt's economic landscape, public service, and social dynamics in complex ways. And Omar reports from Cairo. Basma Khairi is a member of a Sudanese charity organization helping Sudanese refugees in Egypt. She says the United Nations Refugee Commission and other humanitarian agencies are providing aid to the hundreds of thousands of Sudanese refugees who have come here fleeing the civil war back home. Her organization, however, focuses on the most needy refugees. As of the end of January, around 450,000 Sudanese refugees had fled to Nepal in Egypt since the outbreak of war, although they are safe, they face dire economic conditions, shortages in uh, aid funding from international organizations, and a lack of the opportunity to earn a living and settle in Cairo. The United Nations has said close to 500,000 Sudanese refugees have entered Egypt since the National Army and the rival Rapid Support Forces began fighting in April 2023. More than 1.5 million others have fled to other countries and nearly 8 million are internally displaced. The presence of such a large refugee population has affected Egypt's economy. Rents and home prices have risen, especially in areas with high refugee numbers. This has put additional strain on low and income Egyptian families struggling to keep up with rising living expenses. However, the refugees have also contributed to economic activity in certain sectors. Some work in the informal labor market, and some refugees have started small businesses, injecting new entrepreneurial energy into local communities. Said Mubarak is a Sudanese butcher living in Cairo. <laughs> Mubarak says he has experience in this job since he was a butcher in Sudan and when he came here he opened this butcher shop because he doesn't understand any other business. He says he thought about opening a restaurant or something else but he didn't have the experience to do so. Not all Sudanese refugees have the luxury of starting their own business in Egypt. Some desperately need financial aid to live in Cairo. Basma Khairi says her organization is addressing those needs. Our organization is helping needy Sudanese refugees with food, clothing, and medical care, and provide some with vocational training to help them get jobs. The influx of Sudanese refugees has placed a burden on Egypt's public services, particularly in the education and healthcare systems. Professor Ibrahim Awad is director of the Center for Migration and Refugee Studies at the American University in Cairo. He says Egypt should not bear the cost alone. Certainly, you know, uh, Egypt uh, suffers from very high population growth rates and the services uh, cannot follow. And and therefore, some services are not of the quality that um, should be expected. I'm talking here about education, education about healthcare, and and certainly the arrival of uh, refugees increases the the, the pressures. Um, uh, Now, uh, the, the, the international community, according to international refugee law, should contribute to uh, responsibility sharing. It should, in the 1951 Convention on the Status of Refugees, the preamble there is talk about burden sharing. Despite the challenges, some Sudanese refugees aim to contribute to Egypt, and many have found ways to support their fellow refugees, establishing community-based organizations and initiatives to provide financial aid. In Omar, reporting for VUA, President Yowedi Kagutsa Museven was on Sunday, August 18th, the chief guest as the 21st edition of the Federation of East Africa Secondary Schools Sports Association games officially kicked off at Bukedia Comprehensive School in Bukedia District in eastern Uganda. Bukedia Comprehensive School is owned by Speaker of Parliament, Lieutenant Honorable Anita Aniti Among. Other FISA games will be played at Amos College School and Teso College. 
The games to be played by both boys and girls include football, swimming, table tennis, soccer, badminton, basketball, handball, netball, rugby, and hockey. Before opening the games, President Museveni first commissioned Bukede a comprehensive school sports park, which comprises a football stadium, an indoor sports arena, and an Olympic size swimming pool. The president commended Lieutenant Honorable Anita Among for developing a sports infrastructure in the region. He said, I want to thank the Lieutenant Honorable Anita Among and her colleagues here who developed this stadium at a reasonable cost and quickly. I think this should serve as an example to others so that we can develop these stadiums in other parts of the country. President Museveni, who delivered most of his speech in Swahili, informed the participants that the East African delegation is not about just sports, but also strategic security and prosperity of all East Africans, which is as a result of producing a good or a service and selling it. He said, you cannot live a good life without producing a good or a service. This has been our long experience here in Uganda, which we shared with colleagues in East African community like Marimo Julius Nyelele and others. His Excellency Museveni said, adding that the East African integration is so crucial in addressing the issue of markets for produced goods within the region. If the people of East Africa wake up and start producing, they will start realizing that the internal markets are not enough to absorb all the products. Here in Uganda, we have already experienced that. We have a lot of maize, milk, etc. And we have seen that the internal market is not enough. Our Ugandan people are buying a lot of products from Tanzania, especially rice, and also a lot of goods from Rwanda. The bigger the market, the better for the prosperity of our people, President Museveni stated. He gave an example of a Latin America which has got a lot of resources, but its market is fragmented, not like that of the United States of America. On her, on her part, Lieutenant Honorable Anita Among welcomed the participants from East Africa to Uganda and Bukedea and thanked President Museveni for commissioning the sports arena. She also commended him for his vision to develop sports in Uganda. A total of 3,526 participants and young athletes from five countries are taking part in the Games. They include Uganda, 1,590 participants, Kenya, 1,300 participants, Rwanda, 162 participants, Tanzania, 40, 443 participants, and Burundi, 31 participants. South Sudan has not participated in this year's edition. These will be showcasing their potential talents while averaging the integration process according to the Minister of State for Sports, Honorable Peter Ogwang. Honorable Peter Ogwang said, Your Excellency, allow me thank you for championing the ESC Federation. The integration process cannot be complete without the involvement of these young people. And I would like to thank you for your vision and your colleagues in the region for allowing us, young people, to participate in sports. And this is the only way we can market East African integration to the grassroots.